Where are you with God? Do you know, when you hear that, what do you immediately think about? You know, do you think about your relationship with him or where you're physically at? Well, what I want to talk with you about today real quick is where are you in your relationship with God? You know, for a number of years, I struggled with that. I, I, I kept thinking about, you know, what if I talk to God about this? What if I talk to someone else about this? What are they going to think? And all of this, all these things running through my mind. But in reality, God knew exactly where I was with him. No matter what I tried to convince myself of, no matter what I tried to say or do or act, God knew. He knew 100%, and he knows 100% where you are. So in my book, Modern Day Jonah, which I've uh, released, um, I think, and you know, these can be described in different ways, but for the purpose of this, I think there's five places we are with God at any given point. So I want you to go through these and determine, decide, admit to yourself and to God, where are you? The first is, um, are you moving away from God? And this means, you know, to move away means to change positions, to uh, set into motion, to go from one place to another. So you're actively moving away from this. So you're moving away from God. You're not doing anything really that God wants you to do. Kind of like a Jonah or a prodigal son. You have made that conscious decision to go the opposite direction. Is that where you are? Is that what's going on in your life? Isaiah 53, 6 says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So is that where you are? Or maybe you're stumbling. You know, stumbling means to momentarily lose one's balance, to trip. You know, it's kind of like that old joke, right? Do you have a nice trip when somebody, you know, stubs their toe on something and kind of falls down? Um... You know, if you're stumbling, you haven't fully turned your back on God. You're not fully moving away. But, you know, it's kind of the analogy, I guess, would be you're kind of looking back over your shoulder and you're trying to, you know, look back this way, but look this way at the same time. Your focus is not completely on God and it's causing you to stumble. Is that where you are? James 2.10, do you know what it says? It says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So if you're trying to stay in both sides, look back here and look there, look to God, look to your world, to your own, you're going to cause issues. Maybe you're hindered. Maybe you're in the third place. You know, hindered means to delay or to obstruct, to prevent from moving forward, to bring to a full stop. So you're not moving away from God or you're not moving towards God. You're not anything. You're just kind of lukewarm. You don't have much going on. You're not... Um, you know, out doing anything really bad. There's not active, deliberate sin in your life. You're just not doing anything. You're not really serving God. And you're not really out doing anything. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So it says to put aside things. To don't just sit there and, and deal with it and have the weight on it. Put it to the side so you can run the race. Maybe you're in the fourth position. And this is where, you know, this is where we, we should be in the fourth or fifth position. Definitely the fifth is moving towards God. Moving towards means the opposite of moving away. So instead of moving from God, we're moving towards God. We're actively seeking to change our position. We're moving, we're setting into motion, we're going from one place to another. So we're away from God and we're moving towards Him and we're moving towards Him and we continue to move towards Him. Luke 15, 20 says, And he arose and came to his father, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You know, that's what God does. God is waiting for us. He's waiting for you to turn back to him. He's waiting for you to come back to him. He's waiting to run and to accept you. God's never left you. God's never turned his back on you. God's never ignored you. God's right where he was. God is right where he's always been and right where he's always going to be. It's not God that has left you. It's not God that's left me. It's you or it's me that has left God. And so God is right there. He's waiting for us to come back to him. 
uh, you know, it goes on in, in, in Psalms 119, 133. It says, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. So if something's in your life that's, you know, moving you away from God or causing you to stumble or hindering you, the Bible says to get rid of it so it doesn't have dominion over you. And you know what that's like. I know what it's like when we have sin in our life, the guilt or the shame or uh, the time of, well, I want to do this more than I want to serve God. I get it. I struggle with it every day. But the scripture says to get rid of it. In Proverbs 3, 6, it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him in all your ways. So in what you're doing, are you acknowledging him? Are you able to acknowledge him? Because if we do, he says, the scripture says he'll direct our paths. In the last position, is this where you are with God on solid ground? You know, this is right in God's will. This is where he wants us. It's a, you know, it's a solid, reliable, it's a guarantee, it's a rock or boulder, it's a foundation, it's a solid place. That's where our life can be if we're in the middle of God's will for our life. If we're applying his word, if we're developing our relationship with him, if we're applying his wisdom, his wisdom, not our own wisdom, to our lives, then we can be on solid ground. You know, Luke 6, 48 through 49 describes this. And I won't read the whole passage, but it talks about the person who built his house upon the foundation versus the one who built his house upon the sand or the earth. Which one lasts? Which one doesn't have problems? Which one is able to have the comfort and the long-lasting, the longevity of their home? Well, the person who built it upon God, the person who built it upon the right foundation. So I want you to decide, and I want you to be honest. You don't have to be honest with me. You don't have to really, you know, be honest with anyone else, but you need to be honest with yourself because God already knows. Don't let Satan trick you into, because he did for me for a number of years. Oh, uh, Nathan, you can't talk to God about this because what will God think about you? And I bought into it. Hindsight 2020 is like, oh my gosh, that's a, a, not even a, a logical argument, but it worked. Is that where you are? You feel like you can't take um, your problems or your life or your situation or where you are to God and talk to him about it because what is he gonna think? Well, God already knew. When God sent Jesus to die on the cross for you, God already knew how horrible of a wretch you were. God knew how horrible of a wretch I was when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. So don't let that hold you back. As a close up here, um, the old gospel hymn, The Solid Rock, you know, this is really what it comes down to. If you want a life where you can, you know, have balance and you can have joy and you can have harmony, not in the life that you have, but in the midst of the storm, you can have those. It says, on Christ the solid rock I stand. See, he's the only solid thing we have in our life. He's the only unchanging thing we have in our life. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So if you're tired of sinking, if you're tired of being tired, if you're tired of not being where things are going in your life, then get on the solid rock. Get on solid ground. Start doing things the way God wants you to do them. I'm Nathan Tabor with Handling Life. If I can answer any questions for you, if I can help you in any way, uh, please feel free to, to reach out. If you'd like to get a copy of my book, it's called Modern Day Jonah, Stop Surviving, Start Living. It's based on my personal story, based on things I went through in my life and people who helped me, people who guided me. It's based on God's word. It's a you know, Bible-based, Christ-centered. It's got some action plans in here, some things, uh, steps that I took, some steps that you can take. Um, the best part is you can download a free ebook at handlinglife.org. Um, or if you want to buy a hard copy, you can go to Amazon or there's a link on the website as well. So if you have any questions or want to learn more, you can visit handlinglife.org.